my lovely friends. My name is Ava and today I have some romances with very possessive heroes in them. I love me a possessive man, a respectful possessive man, okay? You have to be respectful at the same time. I don't want no creepy overbearing men that are disrespectful. No, 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 no. These are possessive but respectful men that I love in romance books. Let's get into these recommendations. I do want to mention, I do have a previous trope video with this trope and I'll link it down below if you've not seen it yet and you want more recommendations. Also in the comments, let me know down below some of your favorite possessive men. Like, I love them. I need more recommendations. The first one that I have to mention is Stolen Touches by Neva Altaj. This is her fifth book in her Perfectly Imperfect series. This is a mafia romance series with like shorter length, mafia romances that are either all arranged marriage some most of them are arranged marriages um but they're quick reads you know what i mean so if you want like a quick mafia read i definitely recommend this series i love how inclusive neva altaj is with her um books almost every single book in this series has mental health chronic illness or disability representation in them like i love that she makes sure to incorporate that in every single one of her books in this series. This one is about Maline and Salvatore. Salvatore ends up meeting Maline outside the hospital that she works at one day. She is a nurse and ends up helping deliver a baby in the parking lot. <laughs> and Salvatore just happens to be walking by. He was at the hospital for a routine checkup. He is heavily scarred and has some injuries and is an amputee. And he goes to the hospital for checkups. And Malene basically pokes him and is like, sir, I need your jacket for this baby. And he ends up giving her the jacket for the baby. From that point on, he becomes obsessed with her and starts stalking her. He becomes her stalker, literally goes into, <laughs> goes into her uh, apartment while she's not there, puts up cameras everywhere, is watching her 24 seven, stalks this woman, finds out that she's actually from a mafia family. He's a mafia boss, I forgot to say that. Salvatore's a mafia boss. He ends up finding out she is the daughter of a kind of like rivaling, if you will, or a different mafia family. And he makes a deal with her dad and basically is like, I want to marry your daughter. And she has to. <laughs> and she is pissed. She's like, there's a reason why I left that mafia life, why I, why I ran away from my family is because I don't want to be incorporated with all that. And here you are roping me back into it. Salvatore is one of my favorite heroes that is possessive and overprotective to the max. This is one of the books where I loved it. I loved it. He becomes absolutely feral when he doesn't know where Malene is. He even gets her a bracelet at one point that has like a GPS tracker in it so he can look at his phone all day and see where she is <laughs> because he wants to know where she is all the time. Like his skin literally crawls and itches and he goes into like a panic attack if he doesn't know where she is. And then also he notices that her like sleeping shirts are oversized and she just sleeps in oversized t-shirts and he thinks that her shirts are from ex-boyfriends. So he throws all of her old sleep shirts in the garbage and puts all of his shirts in her closet instead. Because he's like, you need to wear mine instead. You're not wearing some other men's clothes. I love him. I was like swooning over this stalker man. I also just loved their banter. Their banter was fantastic in this book. Sea of Ruin by Pam Godwin. It definitely has some possessive men, okay? More than one, yes. Bennett Sharp is a female pirate. And this is basically about her husband named Priest uh, trying to track down his wife. Uh, because she cast him out essentially, kicked him off the boat that she is the captain of. Um, but right when he finds her again, she gets kidnapped. She gets kidnapped by pirate hunter Ashley Cutler. Both of these men treat her not the best at points, so please be aware of that. There's a lot of trigger warnings in here. There's SA on page, so like look up your trigger warnings before getting into this one. I do have all of them listed on my Goodreads review. If you want to check that out, my Goodreads is always linked down below. So you can go check out the Goodreads uh, trigger warnings if you want to know trigger warnings. There are a lot, so please be aware this book is very dark. Um, but she ends up falling in love with both of these men. Like, what is she going to do? What is she going to do? Both of them are very protective of Bennett. And there comes a point when the two of them face each other in this book. And 
are like, what is going on here? And just want what is best for Bennett. A contemporary one is Twisted Love by Miss Anna Huang. This is the first book in her Twisted series. Ava isn't very happy when her brother ends up telling his best friend to watch over her. He's gonna go like out of the country and he is someone to like keep his eye out on Ava. She's 22, is in college, doesn't think she needs a babysitter, but uh, her house that she lives in with her roommates is right next door to her brother's house where our hero ends up moving into for the time being. His name is Alex and they don't really get along if you will. He is very grumpy, she's very sunshine and she makes it like a lifelong goal to make Alex smile, to figure out what makes him tick, what makes him happy. So this is a forbidden brother's best friend, neighbor romance. I really enjoy this one. Alex in here is a very protective man. He is very protective over Ava, does some things in here that I'm like, you say you're not into her, but then you do that. that come on, Alex, come on. He obviously falls for her. He shouldn't, he knows he shouldn't, but he cannot help himself. If you want a monster read, that's a novella. I have Love Laugh Lich by Kate Pryor. Lily's boss is a little bit unconventional to say the least. He's a demon who runs his own like evil company and she's his assistant. She's been his assistant for quite a few years and at the beginning of this book she ends up walking into his office at a very inopportune moment that he has with himself and she's mortified. And things aren't really the same after that. The hero, her boss, sees this as the perfect opportunity to finally make Lily his. Like he wants Lily in more ways than one. This monster is totally obsessed with Lily and is very overprotective of her. There's literally a scene where she's like in like the break room, right, with other coworkers, and there's this guy, I think he's either talking to her, asking her out, or simply just talking to her. And the hero gets so overprotective. He literally opens up like a chasm in the in the floor and sends him to hell for simply talking <laughs> to Lily. Like he literally sends him to hell because he was talking to his woman. It's like, not on my watch, not happening. Like, <laughs> I love him. If you want an alien romance, I have Broken by the Horde King by Zoe Draven. This is her fourth book in the Horde Kings of Dakar series. And it's my favorite one in the series. I'm obsessed with it. Our heroine in here is a human woman who was found in like the woods on this alien planet and was taken in by a family in this alien village. And she's the only human amongst like all these aliens. So she gets bullied a lot by other kids growing up, but her one solace is her best friend who is the hero of this book. And he's a prince of sorts. He is set to like be the leader of the village when he grows up. And they're basically best friends from the point where he defends her. When they're a little bit older, when they're in their teens, she reveals her feelings to the hero and he rejects her in front of their whole village. And uh, she is so upset. Um, he goes away for quite a few years. It's been 10 years since they've seen each other. He comes back and he wants to make Mava, the heroine, his. And it's gonna do a lot of groveling to get there, okay? Kieran, the hero of this book, is absolutely obsessed with her. He has his reasons, had his reasons for rejecting her all those years ago. And you learn about why when you read the book. And um, when anyone, when any guy is talking to her, he's just like, get out. Not happening, no way. I think when she goes to his village with him, she travels to another village with him, um, there are some guys talking to her and he's like, no, 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 not happening. Not happening at all, no. See, I love men like that, that are like, you're not talking about women, that woman is mine. Even though she doesn't think she's mine, she's mine. It's gonna happen, like, she's mine. Another alien romance that I love is Taken to Varaxia by Elizabeth Stevens. Faded mate romances have like very possessive men in them. And that's probably one of the reasons why I love him so much. Raku is the leader of the planet Voraxia and he's noticing that some of his goods and money is going towards this abandoned like moon a part of their planet. And he's like, why are things being sent to this moon? I need to go check it out. He ends up learning that there is a secret settlement of human slaves that have been put on this planet and he is mortified. A lot of these women have been used and abused by some of the people on the neighboring planets for him and he's like, no, this is done. We're over with this. But then he finds out that his fated mate, he can sense his fated mate on this moon. Tracks her down, finds out it's Miari, who is absolutely terrified of him. They don't speak the same language at all. She is half alien, half human, 
one her mother was abused and essayed by a different alien than the hero it's a different type of alien but an alien nonetheless and so um she's like a hybrid she's half alien half human and she is absolutely terrified of aliens because of what they do to her people since they don't speak the same language Raku can't really explain to her like we're fated mates you're coming with me like there's no other option so uh he takes her back to his planet with him where she's not very happy she's not very happy to be there to say the least um but they obviously fall in love with each other there is a lot of animosity in here Raku is trying to learn about what happened to Miari and her people and like what they have gone through as well. Raku is so absolutely obsessive over Miari. If a man even comes like 10, within 10 feet of Miari, he wants to kill him. Like he's like, you're not touching or going near my woman, not happening. That's what these heroes in this series do. They have this certain uh, faded mate quality to them that their species do and I'm obsessed with it. I'm obsessed with it. I need to read more books in this series so I can read more about these obsessive alien men. Ooh, a Ruby Dixon one, another alien romance is Argyle's Resonance. This is her first book in her new series, the Ice Planet Clone series. I do recommend reading these books in order even though it's the first book in a new series from her. It takes place on Not Hoth, which is the same planet that Ice Planet Ovarians and Ice Home take place on. So like read those two series before you pick this one up. I mean, you can do what you want to do. I'm not the reading police, okay? Just my personal opinion, okay? Read, read, read those before you get into this one. Anyway, Arjal is a character that lives on the ice home beach that we've been really wanting a book about. And this is finally his book. He ends up getting kidnapped by some mysterious people. I can't really talk about this book all that much because like the summary could spoil the ice home series but he ends up getting kidnapped by some mysterious people on the planet and he gets put in a cell with a human woman who is apparently his fated mate so both of them are kidnapped and are in this cell together and he is protecting her from the people that kidnapped them like he literally will hide her behind him no matter how how small the cell is like he's like i would die before they take you again not happening like you're not leaving the cell without me unless we're escaping another alien one we get a lot of alien ones because i love alien romances because they have a lot of possessive men in them um stolen by an alien by amanda milo is the first book in her stolen by an alien series the heroine of this book um is one of the many human women that get illegally taken from earth and is put on an auction block if you will and is bought by some gross aliens the hero of this book ends up hearing the heroine's like struggles and rescues her before she's able to be abused and used by some gross aliens who bought her and saves her he thinks that she is an alien species that are princesses to him there are alien species that look like humans except they have wings and he's like oh she has to be one of these aliens like what happened to her wings did her wings get clipped what is going on he doesn't know that she's a human he doesn't know about humans anyway his alien species are very protective over these princesses and they get even more protective and possessive when uh, they start bonding with them that's what happens to the hero of this book he ends up bonding with this little human woman he's trying to save they don't speak the same language at all there's a huge language barrier throughout 75 percent of the book like they do not speak the same language there are certain scenes in here where like the hero's just like why am i acting this way like this woman is not mine she cannot be mine she's a princess i'm a lowly alien like not happening but his body cannot help himself. Like his body knows like that is our mate. I have two quick short novellas if you wanna pick those up. A Jessica Kane one is Making Their Vows. This is like a different social class uh, romance. Our hero is like an underground fighter and a heroine is basically a socialite daughter, like a socialite daughter. She ends up going with her friends to the underground fighting ring and right when she sees the hero fighting, she becomes absolutely like obsessed with him. It's definitely insta lust, into lo insta love. And the hero sees the heroine and is like, she is, mine first time they meet the heroine is with her friend group and with actually her ex-boyfriends in the friend group i'm pretty sure or a guy who really wants to get with her anyway the hero sees this guy trying to get with her and literally i think even like breaks his wrist or something like that like he is like no she's not going home with you she's coming with me okay and the last one that i'll have to mention is another novella this is runaway bride by cassie mint who the hero of this book is so possessive over the heroine he literally unalives his own dad and brother so they will not get to her the hero is a part of a mafia family and he is in line to be like the mafia so the head dude um but only his father and brother are in the way and apparently there's like a alliance with this family 
where the head of this mafia family is going to marry this woman. The hero of this book is in love with this woman. He's obsessed with her. He wants her. And he's like, my dad and my brother are not going to have her. So let's unalive them. They're done. I want to marry her. She's going to be mine. He does that. He does that. He unalives his own family to get this one. Um, but then he is so upset when on their wedding day, she becomes a runaway bride. She basically jumps out of the church's window and runs away so she doesn't have to marry this man. <laughs> so he goes to track her down because he knows that she is his. Anyways, there you have it. Those were 10 recommendations with possessive men in them. Let me know down below if you've read any of these books or if you plan to. And if you don't feel like commenting any of those things, you can leave me what are we going to do let's do i think there's boxing gloves right um do the boxing glove emoji because we have uh, the last book second to last book i talked about had a fighter in it so boxing gloves anyways thank you all so so much for watching i'll see you soon in my next one bye y'all